Swiss Federal Councillor Karin Keller-Sutte and the British Chancellor of the Exchequer Jeremy Hunt signed an agreement on mutual recognition in the field of financial services in Bern. That's the so-called Bern Financial Services Agreement. The agreement strengthens competitiveness and promotes close cooperation between two important international financial centers. After a negotiation process lasting more than two years, the head of the Federal Department of Finance, that is Federal Councillor Karin Keller-Sutte, and the British Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, signed an agreement that is unique in the world in its approach and scope. It will strengthen cooperation between the two important financial centers, as I said, and especially in a challenging environment, the Bern Financial Services Agreement sends a strong signal for an open and resilient financial market and demonstrates Switzerland's ability to act internationally. For the first time, two countries have mutually recognized the equivalence of their respective legal and supervisory frameworks in selected areas in the financial sector on the basis of an international treaty based on an in-depth review. And this enables or simplifies access to the other party's market. This is complemented by increased regulatory and supervisory cooperation, ensuring stability, integrity and customer protection. And Federal Councillor Karin Keller-Sutte was satisfied with the outcome of the negotiations and said, This agreement helps to maintain and strengthen the international competitiveness of Switzerland as a financial center in the long term. The agreement includes recognition of equivalence in the areas of banking, investment services, insurance, asset management and financial market infrastructure for professional clients. In financial services, especially asset management, cross-border business activities are made possible for Swiss providers. Based on the agreement, British private customers with assets of over 2 million British pounds can in future be served directly across borders. In the insurance sector, the Bern Financial Services Agreement covers individual areas of non-life insurance business for large corporate customers in which British insurance companies will be able to operate across borders in the future. This excludes in particular accident, health and car liability insurance, as well as monopoly insurance of all kinds for professional policyholders. The UK reaffirms the possibility for Swiss companies to provide cross-border insurance services to large corporate clients under current UK law. Under the agreement, untied UK insurance intermediaries will also be exempted from the localization requirement under the revised Insurance Supervision Act, which comes into force on January 1st in 2024. In the area of investment management, the agreement confirms the existing access for the promotion and offering of collective investment schemes, as well as the delegation of portfolio management and risk management. For financial market infrastructures, the Bern Financial Services Agreement recognizes the equivalence of the relevant central counterparty framework, confirms the existing framework in relation to trading venues and uh, facilities compliance with certain obligations and cross-border OTC derivative transactions. Following the signing of the agreement, the Federal Council will prepare a message and submit it to Parliament. The agreement requires approval by the parliaments of both countries before it can come into force. The agreement aims to boost trade and cut compliance costs for financial firms operating in both countries. The deal formalizes and expands the existing cross-border regulatory practices between Britain and Switzerland in financial services. And this means that firms from one country will be able to operate in the other country under their home country's rules, rather than having to comply with additional local requirements. The agreement primarily focuses on wholesale activities, such as trading between institutional investors and private wealth management, rather than retail banking services for individual consumers. 
This is because wholesale markets are considered to be less sensitive to regulatory changes and are more likely to benefit from the removal of barriers to trade. The deal does not cover smaller retail customers such as individual bank account holders or retail investors. This was a deliberate decision to avoid conflicts with existing EU regulations that require banks in Switzerland to offer services to EU customers on the same terms as their domestic customers. The deal establishes a framework for enhanced cooperation on supervisory matters, including information sharing and joint enforcement actions. This should help maintain financial stability and protect consumers in both countries, large ones though. The deal is expected to bring several benefits to both Britain and Switzerland. The increased market access and regulatory alignment should foster greater trade and investment flows between the two countries' financial services sectors. The simplified regulatory framework and streamlined cross-border operations should lead to lower compliance costs for financial institutions. Both countries' financial centers could gain a competitive edge in international markets by offering a more streamlined and harmonized regulatory environment. The agreement establishes a framework for mutual recognition of regulatory practices in financial services, allowing firms from either country to operate under their home country's rules in the other market. And this streamlines the regulatory process and reduces the burden of complying with multiple sets of regulations. The deal focuses primarily on wholesale activities such as trading between institutional investors and private wealth management, as I said. And this is because these segments are, as I have to repeat, to be less sensitive to regulatory changes. And uh, they will definitely benefit, but only the big players, uh, the rich people. Retail banking services for individual consumers, as I said, are not covered. And uh, the deal includes provisions for enhanced transparency and data sharing between regulatory authorities in both countries. This will facilitate effective oversight and cooperation in addressing cross-border financial risks. A dedicated regulatory dialogue mechanism is established to facilitate ongoing consultations and cooperation between the financial regulatory authorities of Britain and Switzerland. And this will ensure effective implementation and adaptation of the agreement over time. The deal is expected to significantly expand market access for financial institutions from both countries, prom uh, promoting competition and innovation in the financial services sector. And this could lead to new opportunities for financial firms and investors. By eliminating the need for dual regulatory compliance, the deal is expected to reduce operational costs and administrative burdens for financial firms. And this could make it more attractive for firms to expand their operations into both markets. And the agreement could contribute to strengthened financial stability by reducing the risk of regulatory arbitrage, which can destabilize markets when firms shift activities to jurisdictions with less stringent regulations. The deal fosters collaboration between financial institutions and regulators, facilitating knowledge exchange and best practices in areas like risk management and also market infrastructure. The financial services trade deal between Britain and Switzerland is seen as a potential model for future trade agreements between Britain and other countries, particularly those with strong financial sectors. The deal is expected to boost trade and investment in financial services between Britain and Switzerland, which are both major financial centers. This could lead to new job creation and growth opportunities in both countries. By eliminating the need for firms to comply with multiple sets of regulatory requirements, the deal could also reduce the costs of doing business in both markets, and this could make it easier for firms to expand into new markets and could also encourage innovation in financial products and services. And uh, as I said, 
they are still hoping that it brings more financial stability but that's one of the points we will see on in the future but in general this doesn't affect most uh, people in Britain or Switzerland because we are just talking about um, private accounts from two million pounds upwards as you know and uh, only big corporate stuff and uh, some people are really worried still because the deals focus on wholesale activity and private wealth management may exclude some smaller firms and could limit its overall impact on the broader economy. This uh, is an, quite a significant deal, but uh, for, for be the outcome of the whole thing, but both sides are happy and so we will just have to wait and see. And if you want to see more right now, the next video is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.